Zap and Roger. Is there a difference? I guess the distinction would be the difference between a Mick Jagger record and a Rolling Stone record. Sometimes I think Mick Jagger goes out and he does a project by himself because he feels like uh, expressing himself as a solo artist. And uh, I don't know, it was just uh, something I wanted to do to, uh, to assure my fans that they could get two records a year. Uh, record companies won't let you uh, put one record out and I decided I would get try to uh, be signed uh, both ways as a producer of Zap and a producer of the Roger record. And uh, I had no idea that More Bounce, which was the first Zap record, would do so great. great. And at the same time, I had no idea that Hurry Through the Grapevine, which was uh, the second record I produced, and my first solo record. I had no idea that uh, these records would be number one, but wow, what can I say? It was like a dream come true. Were you surprised by the success of Unlimited and I Want to Be Your Man? Totally surprised. I worked harder on that record than I did any record at all because I had done so many records before and I was really afraid, you know, to just remain a dance, zany funketeer. I wanted to reach out uh, and try to grow with my fans and I felt that doing a song like I Want to Be Your Man would, now you're not going to like this, but it would, t I, I felt like I could reach out and say to the ladies, that yes indeed ladies sometimes we the men are not willing to commit so quickly and there's really nothing wrong with committing that all the ladies want is for you to say that you will be with them so I decided I would do a song like I want to be a man to show all other guys that it's okay to be a little weak for the ladies because when you think about it don't you love it when a lady says take me I'm yours well don't you oh yes so why can't we express that back to the ladies so I wanted to try to, you know, select songs like that. And basically, that's what I did with every song, even night and day. Every song on the album is basically a love song. Plus, I was having some trouble with a lady that I really wanted, so she wouldn't listen to me because I did it wrong so long. So I wrote some songs. Did it help? Did you get it back? No. <laughs> but, but, I, uh, I had a successful record, and it introduced me to a lot more ladies and more money. Uh, when I was a kid, my parents would seem like they were really happy on the weekends, but through the week they would seem cross. And, and as a kid, I didn't understand it. Now I understand it that they were at work through the week, and on the weekends they were off, they got paid, they had something to drink, and they had their favorite songs. And I thought on the weekend that my parents were happy because of the music. And they always listened to blues and, and uh, black music that had a lot of bass in it. So what I would do through the week, Michael, is I wanted my parents to be happy. So through the week, while they were at work, I would pick their favorite songs that they listened to on the weekends, and I would learn the songs note for note. So I could, when they would come home, I would be able to say, well, watch this, Dad, and I would play his favorite song, and it would make him smile. And I, I guess because of that, I always understood about the heavy bottom. And the other thing that keeps the music so funky is I eat chitlins. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yes, that's yes. it for for you Canadians. That's a the intestines of a hog that most black people eat. And if you eat them, it's true. It's true. Even if you talk like this, well, hello. Basically, I've uh, worked my way around the music industry for a lot of years, and I've uh, kept myself pretty much away from most of the tribal music with the lower bottom and the equalizers that are turned up in the lower 50 hertz area. And basically, you know, so if you eat some chitlins, you instantly go into, well, like, yo, hit me, uh, crap, see, kakagoo. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes, even when I started making a lot of money, I, I would find myself slipping back to this person, you know. Mm -hmm. but my hair would go back, and I would say, well, listen, I'm not certain if I should sing this kind of music or not. And chitlins would get me right back into the right situation, you see. <laughs> what is the connection with James Brown for you? Why did you do Papa's Got a Brand New Bag? James Brown to me is the equivalent to Frank Sinatra. I mean, he is the greatest. He's always made hit records. He's always been a star and a role model, role model to black people and really all races. And I think he needs to be commended for his work and his dedication to what he's doing. And for me, as just a, a, uh, an entertainer coming along, I feel like anything I can do to uh, push his career, I think I should do. I felt that recording Papa's Got a Brand New Bag will give him recognition. Naturally, all of the uh, rights and royalties for the record goes to James Brown, and uh, it's, a, it's like a gift to him if he's having any trouble. And I just feel like it's necessary. And he's just great. 
What's the video like? Uh, the video is basically silly. I'm being very, very, very silly. I start with a taxi cab scene where I'm taking a lot of girls out of the taxi cab, and then I go from a taxi cab driver to this suave, neat guy with a brand new bag, making the ladies fall for me and loving me, and yum, yum, yum.